For those of us born right after World War II, the sacrifices of our elders to preserve the peace and prosperity we took for granted then only became clear as we grew older and more mature. Grown-ups then rarely spoke about the war, and almost never to us children. And our teachers didn't seem to have time to get to it in our history classes. Perhaps it was because the war was simply too fresh and painful for the nation to relive. So many lives lost. Most were only names and photos to us children. They had been our neighbors, uncles, aunts, cousins, brothers, sisters, mothers, and fathers. But as the years passed, it became increasingly clear to many in my generation what our parents already knew, that citizenship includes a moral imperative to be physically, mentally, and emotionally prepared to defend the highest ideals of our nation at home or abroad. World War II fueled the rebirth of functional physical training in physical education. In my hometown, Davenport, Iowa, had a strong gymnastics and combatives tradition inspired by the German Turnverein. Gymnastics and wrestling were part of our culture, and judo appeared in the early 1960s as anti-Asian sentiment began to fade. Redwood City, California had one of the best post-war physical education programs in the country. It was created by Frank Griffin. He borrowed heavily from training methods he learned during visits to military installations across the country. Griffin's students would later write about how his innovations changed their lives and prepared them for healthy and active adulthood. Griffin demonstrated the capacity of functional physical education to transform all students. Griffin's junior, Stan Laprate, later created a similar program at La Sierra High School in Carmichael, California. It was widely recognized as the best physical education program of the early 1960s, but it was sadly an exception. Just as our elders predicted, my generation went to war. 50% of young men tested were unfit for duty, and many inductees were extremely unprepared. Those accepted in the early and mid-1960s were fortunate that the military training methods developed during World War II were somewhat intact. The Army, for instance, had clearly defined calisthenic that was woven in to off-the-ground and weapons training. Infantry basic training and AIT doctrine were straightforward and direct. Calisthenic was taught with attention to rational progression, variety, and precision. The PT test was purely functional. Many of our drill sergeants had already been to war and knew where we were probably heading. There was no reason to scream at us. We were there to learn and had little time to prepare for what was ahead of us. As in World War II and the Korean War, the 1960s brought sobering lessons about the importance of keeping our nation physically strong and vibrant. President George Washington once wrote, to be prepared for war is one of the most effectual ways of preserving peace. World War II Secretary of the Navy Frank Knox warned future generations with these sobering words. It is the truth that only those are fit to be free who can fight to win and maintain their freedom. Whenever a nation becomes incapable for physical reasons of maintaining itself in this world, its freedom will be destroyed. The price of freedom is the ability to defend it. <laughs>